there is a, a van here by a very interesting person who actually also got his, his vehicle worked on by Chris. We might get into that a bit later. But um, everybody, this is Farrell. And uh, Farrell is a, a rapper and a van lifer. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I've been living in my van uh, for about a year and a half now. At first, this was all just metal. I lived in here for like six months whenever there was no amenities or furnishings. And then uh, after six months, I'd finally raised the money and then hired Chris, and then we got it all built out. Yeah, sick, man. So let's start with, uh, this is wood, obviously, huh? Yeah, yeah, these are all like recycled fence boards that we've gotten pretty cheap. For, oh, like, did you get them from Bob? Yeah, Bob, Bob Wood. <laughs> That's what I called it, Bob Wood. Dude, th yeah. that actually turned out way better because you guys sanded it. Yeah, we sanded it. There's, uh, it's funny because I have asthma, and there was like so many times like just inhaling sawdust, you know? Like power sanding for so long. Yeah. But finally we got it done. It took forever to just to sand those boards, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. The Bob wood I think adds like a really nice homey touch, you know, to it all. Yeah, I didn't know that Bob's wood would be so good looking. Right. Other otherwise I may have been uh you know, tempted to, to, to use his wood. Yeah, it and also just such a like a bargain, you know, like we saved so much money by using this wood instead of like you know, cedar or something else. And I think it adds a lot more personality to be, I think that's kind of what made the van in a way. Yeah, I, I actually, I mean, there's people who would pay a lot of money for this kind of wood to be already finished and treated. And, right, right. And you guys did, uh, you know, all the, the work yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, how much was the, all the wood for all the, the panels or whatever? The bob wood was like a hundred bucks. No I'm way. Like, I'm, not even, I'm not even joking. Maybe like 130, you know? But yeah. the uh, all the rest of the furniture was actually made out of oak from Home Depot. Okay. And so those were fifty bucks a sheet. And yep. I think we might have spent like around four hundred ish, or maybe a little more on yep. on that. Uh, you know. Yeah. This, the only thing that's not oak or bobwood is this countertop that Alice actually found on the side of the road, and she uh, she fucking she's the one that made this thing look beautiful. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, Alice, if anybody know, if anyone doesn't know. Is the owner of the house there where uh, I got my bus worked on and yep. Farrell's van. She's yep. a very sweet person. Sweetest. So, what's going on over here? This is a storage area? Yeah, this is a, yeah, so, you know, I'm a musician. This is a good problem to have, but this is almost mostly empty. Wow. Uh, because, you know, typically it's like full. This one's more full. So, this is just like shirts and CDs and stuff. Yep. You know, and uh, just as an artist and a musician, like, you're always going to have merch, you know? So, that's some so, of your merch? Yeah, I mean, this is almost a defunct graphic that's about to be out. But okay. Because I go by Earthworm, and the idea behind, like, an Earthworm dissecting a person, I thought, was just, like, hilarious. <laughs> and so, uh, the next one's going to be, like, a worm uh, fishing with a person as bait. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I just like those ideas of, like, those uh, little Earthworm flips or whatever. Cool. But really, I would say, beyond the shirts, just check out the music if you want to. And we will link it below. And also, we were talking yesterday when we got barbecue about some different ideas. <laughs> yeah, the new album called Vanarchy. Yeah. So I think I think that's really... So a van life rapper in real life, living it and rapping about it. And what's funny is that I didn't get into it, like, because van life is so trendy. That's not why. I just couldn't afford rent, you know? And I know that art is what I want to do with my life, you know? And having the ability to create full-time without the pressures of rent is... That's really why I got into this. Yeah, so you know? you're able to, to pursue your passions more because of Full the time. reduced expenses. I don't have to, like, nowadays I can actually cover what I need with my music, you know? Yeah. Would, so. would you say it's easier to spend less money than it is to make more money? Oh, God, yeah. That's There's, like, a quote from Bruce Lee where he talks about how it's not even always what you can add, but what you can subtract, you know? Mm -hmm. And so with my music, I was to the point where I was maybe making, like, 500 plus a month. Right, but rent in Austin and all my bills total, I was spending like thirteen hundred dollars a month. So you could look at that in two ways. You could say, "Oh, I'm not a good enough artist. I need to make more." Or you could be like, "Damn, most artists don't even make five hundred a month. That's a great start." And uh, just go from there. And so I just started subtracting bills. Yeah. Instead of feeling like you know I needed to add more, which obviously I'd like to, but I personally think that's the best way to do it. Because it is really hard for an up and coming, I would call myself an artist too, in a certain way, make videos. But it's a really tough thing to just go full time or just follow that passion 100%. So here we have a perfect example of someone cutting costs, which allows more time and less 
a work time and yeah. so more time to dedicate to your craft, to your music, and you came back to Austin. Why? Oh, well, so <laughs> basically to raise a little bit of money, uh, the job that paid for all of this was, uh, it's called pedicabbing. I know that sounds insane. It's this bike taxi, like bike rickshaw thing. I just pedaled passengers around downtown for four years. And um, it's a cool job because there's you're technically an independent contractor. You don't have to like clock in or like sort of have a boss. It's it's really cool. I, I'm a big fan of pedicab. I actually have like a little pedicab tattoo right down here. I don't know if the lighting's good. Oh enough. yeah, we got it. But uh, That's so funny. Any, anyway, um, I came to Austin to raise a little bit of money for a video editing laptop because I want to start vlogging and stuff too. Because you know I, I've left. I just got back. I was on the West Coast like touring and playing shows and doing all types of cool stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so for the people who don't know, maybe who want to live the van life, how can someone get into pedicabbing and how much can someone make? So, okay. Basically, if you want to get into pedicabbing, uh, there's there's a lot of cities around America that you can do it in. Austin, I'd say, is like pretty good. It's not the only one there is, but um, really it's very simple. If you can pass a background check, you can be a pedicabber. And I mean, even pass a background check is, I mean, even if you have some shit stains on your background, you could probably still be a pedicabber. So you just come to Austin and then, uh, you can even go to austinpedicab.org and then they'll, they'll give you like the little micro paper trail you have to follow. And honestly, your rookie, your rookie months, you might not do incredible. It is sort of like a skill that you develop, you know, but I, me and my prime, I was probably easily making like, I don't know. 350 to 500 a week, you know? Like, that, that's great money, especially yeah. if you're living in the van and yeah. your expenses are nothing. And then you, with your rest of the free time, you're making music. Yeah, yeah. So, and I mean, the way that my brain works is I kind of go on tunnel vision. Like, I do, like, one thing really intensely for a while. And so, like, whenever I was pedicabbing, I was just pedicabbing. And I did that for months and months and months and months. And then uh, once it was time, you know, I just got the van and then got the interior done, and then hit the road. Bro, I respect the hustle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's do a little bit more of the tour. So yeah. uh, I noticed you have a keyboard, and yeah, yeah. you have a fridge down here. So this is actually not a fridge. This is a, the, like the brain for the solar. Oh, so that's this right. Is like my inverter, my voltage meter, and all that. Right yep. now we're running low because the sun hasn't been out in a while. But yep. <laughs> but yeah, so there's a, that's basically where all of my like solar panels are plugged into. Mm -hmm. And then so, I don't know, just making beats and stuff. Uh, I'm a huge fan of like sampling from vinyl and <laughs> what's funny though is that uh, on my most recent trip to LA I got closer to success than ever and it was actually my love for samples that is currently holding me back because whenever I was finally face to face with somebody who could make a move for me this person was like are you aware that that is blatant copyright infringement I was like Fuck. <laughs> So, so it's funny that like the thing that I love most is like the thing that's currently holding me back. So that was even another reason why I came back to Austin was just to make a sample free demo to go around that copyright stuff. But yeah, I don't give a fuck. I still like sampling from vinyl. I'll do that on my own time for fun, you know? Yep. So that's what that, that USB record player was for. So this is an 88 key MIDI controller. This is pretty sweet. It's basically a piano, mm -hmm. but it's not like analog. So if like you touch it, you know, it has to be plugged into your... Uh, laptop, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. And then I have this really awesome speaker here, and it's it's really loud. And it's cool though because it's like portable, and Bluetooth, and rechargeable. This is like my best friend right here. And it's cool too because with this you can do street performances. Like there are times whenever I'm a, over like across state lines, and I'll bust the van door open and then just use this and like perform on the street. And the album is called Vanarchy, so whenever people see like a street performer using his van as a prop. Uh, it, I don't know, it just tends to go well. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is a real, I wouldn't even call it a prop, this is like <laughs> your home. I dig it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm uh, selling myself short. No, no, I mean, it's absolutely a prop, it's part of your shtick, <laughs> For right? Sure, but yeah, it's yeah. like, it's a utilitarian prop. It, it I mean, people's minds. You whatever, are living yeah. the van life, rap life full, here. Like, full time, yeah, this is definitely no gimmick. But uh, this thing is super rad. This is like one of the coolest additions. This is like this, like, China doll table. Sorry, I just knocked my stool over there. <laughs> You know, van life, right? Exactly. So, uh, yeah, but this thing is sick because it, like, slides in and out. And there's there's not, there's no, you know what I mean? It just 
this thing is so rad because you can L the desk off or you can use it as a merch table whenever you're rapping on the street. Mm -hmm. This thing is sick. Or you can even slide it over there and have a little desk on the couch too. So I use this little table all the time. So there's that, and then I think probably one of the other features that everybody gets like their brands blown on is this uh, <laughs> this little projector right here. And there's actually a projector screen. And uh, so basically like, uh, you know, and you can like change it to where it like focuses or whatever. Yeah. I'm not gonna worry about yep. it. But uh, right above your head is a, there's like this little tray that you can like put the projector on or whatever. And then, uh, <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. And so then you can just chill and just watch whatever you need or want to or... Yeah. And what's cool though is that uh, it's it's connected to my phone and so I have uh, unlimited data and I can plug my phone right into the projector and then just stream anything like That's Netflix amazing. or whenever the Astros were in the World Series. I'm from Houston and I was just fucking <laughs> watching the World Series in my van. It was pretty rad. That's rad, man. Yeah. I respect that. So uh, this is the uh, kitchen area over here. Yeah. This is super straightforward, honestly. For the past year and a half, I've gotten away with not having a fridge, but I'm getting to the point where I kind of want one. So that's going to be my next investment, most likely. Mm -hmm. But truth be told, I usually just buy my food by the meal, you know? Like, I just go into the grocery store and then get what I need for that moment. Mm -hmm. And then... Chop it up, cook it up. Yeah, chop it up, cook it up. This, uh... So this actually slides out. <coughs> and then it's like just a little cutting board, which is pretty convenient. Yep. Just for little stuff, you know? And then, uh, and then you got your power, powered by propane on the side, right, right, which right. we just talked about. And it <laughs> yeah. says the number one thing, don't do sideways. So you're going to think I'm about gonna that. Check, I'm going to check into that. I'm very <laughs> appreciative that you pointed that if out. If anybody has some experiences, please comment below because I don't know. I haven't researched this. And I've been using it for like eight months or so like that. And uh, so far, nothing. Yeah. No, no explosions yet. Yeah. Great. Well, hopefully you don't have any. Yeah, that would be <laughs> ideal. I don't, I'm not trying to use this fire extinguisher yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then so, what's down below pretty from... Pretty much, it's just like there's a seven gallon water jug and then it's like foods and spices, you know, and like pots and pans, kind of like basic yep. basic kitchen stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And so... Now, do you have a lot of things rattling around, opening when you're driving, falling out? Honestly, no. Like about the only thing that ever will happen is like my guitar will clank on the wall, but this is not like some fancy ass guitar, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it, I, it doesn't bother me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, the, and, uh, and then obviously... The yeah, bed. the bed pulls out. Yeah, okay. the bed pulls out. It's it's on like a pretty cool system actually. Like these are basically just like uh, like teeth. You know what I mean? Yep. So and it just like slides in and out. Truth be told, whenever it's just me here, I don't really mind sleeping on it like a couch. It's usually whenever I have guests. Right. Whenever. Yeah. And then um, so what is the vehicle called? It's a, a Dodge. It's a Ram Promaster. Dodge Ram Promaster. This is a short wheelbase one. Yeah, the shortest, the 118. That's cool. And uh, but yeah. It's it's pretty sick. It's basically like their modern adaptation of a sprinter. You know? Yep, sick man. Yeah. Uh, so where can everybody check out your music and uh, when are you gonna start making YouTube videos? Very soon. As soon as I get this laptop, really. Okay. Uh, I would say for anybody that wants to keep up with me on Instagram, I would say is the best, and that's just at Earthworm. But Earthworm is spelled Earth W U R M, because like I'm not Earthworm without you, you know. And so there's that, and then my website is in my description on Instagram. So. Cool, and send me that, and I'll put the link below. Yeah, cool. Sweet, man. Thanks a lot. Yep, I appreciate thanks. it. Peace. All right, one more question before we go. How much did the build cost you in materials? In materials was 4500 Sick. And then, and then a little bit of labor? Labor was about two grand. Cool. Yeah. So 6500 and you pimped this about, thing out. Maybe. It may be like the material. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and say yeah to that. That was pretty. It's 65 to 7, you know? And that's for electricity, yeah. stove, wood, labor, lights. Like all that shit. Yeah. For cool. everything. Yeah. The solar was most of it, to be honest. Like between yep. that Yeti, the, the school zero right here, uh, and then the, the solar panels, what, that was 50%. Bucks? Yeah, yeah. That was 50% of all Two. the budget went to solar. Yep. So. Same. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right on, man. Yeah. I just want to mention one quick thing. Um, about the interview is definitely not to promote um, the guy who built all this stuff. If you've seen the videos, you know what I'm talking about. Both Farrell and I have horror stories of working with him, and I intentionally left out all of the uh, drama when I was here working on the first half of the bus in Austin, Texas. Um, but I, I just <laughs> want to say, in no way is this an endorsement to work with him. I wouldn't recommend it at all. There are plenty of people out there who are capable of uh, building vans and buses and um, 
those people will probably respect you the way you need to be respected. So, um, yeah, uh, just want to say that quickly, and that's probably all I will say about the, uh, this in the videos. If I see you at a van meetup or whatever, we can get into some juicy details, but uh, this is the Kardashians, and I try to stay away from drama. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow on the next upload.